Hello everybody, welcome to another painting video. This one's going to be a little more complex. I think you can see this is in multiple pieces here. What these pieces are, are bits and pieces of Lady of Anguish. It's from Creature Caster. What I'll do is I'll take you to the website now and you can see what it is we're going to be working on. So this is the actual Creature Caster site here, and there she is, Lady of Anguish. There's multiple options that you can do with these things, with, without wings, usually two different heads, different hand options. So let's take a look at this piece right here. So you can see, we've got some different options for weapons over here. And I think there's also something that'll close off the wings. You can see your two heads up there. So again, this is one of the earlier sculpts, so not quite so many options. And we'll go back here. And I think you saw our reference pictures. There's some of these blues and browns on the reference picture. You can see the intestines. We'll be doing some purple stuff there. But the other thing we're going to employ is going to be the, right here, your Pro Acryl paints. Now here's your full set. We are not going to be using the full set. We'll use a portion of it, maybe a third, probably not even that much. But see, there's some blues, some magentas, some browns in there. We're going to use all that. Go back to scene one. So here's your Pro Acryl paint. And you can see we've got some over here in these two corners. Got some reference pictures. Now the one over here in the upper right that's actually a peacock butterfly. This one over here on the left, that is the, oh, what's that called? The buckeye butterfly. This one on the left has some blues in it, some oranges. That's probably the one we're going to go with. Now, let's see if you can see it on the wing here. See right here? A little circle there. It just put me in mind of what we have going on with here and up here, these like a little bit of eyes, whatever. So we'll see if we can make this color scheme mesh with our figure. I'm just thinking butterfly because of, well, the wings. And then when I saw all of this right here on the base, all of the fungus, the mushrooms and everything, decided to almost make it like a little forest swamp type base here. I thought that might be fun. Some kind of chaos -y forest swamp base. And even some parts of the body here we're starting to look a little bit like butterfly pieces. So the difference here in the containers, and this is something I made sure uh, was going to be the case. See how that top opens up there? There's none of this unscrewing it and, well, attempting to squeeze out a dropper bottle and it just clogs on you. This was the key thing for me. I said there can be no dropper bottles. This is, in many ways, like an Elmer's glue thing and I don't have those ever really clog on me ever in all the lifetime of using Elmer's glue so that is what I love about these things we've done this uh, used this paint in a few other videos and it seems to glaze well covers well dries very matte and the other reason I broke up some of these parts is well then you can get to see maybe how that works here maybe we do some glazes of blue here the overall effect is maybe more brownish, or maybe we go more with the oranges. So we'll see. That's another reason why I do these instead of always having a preset color scheme. Sometimes, just like me, you have to suss out a color scheme. You have to figure it out on the fly. Like this weapon here, it has little eyeballs on it, which I thought we could make blue and sort of reflect like the, like the actual butterfly wings there. So I thought that might be interesting. There's some of this almost spiny type element. And again, you see that in the designs on the butterfly wings. So we'll see how much of that we can incorporate. And then like always, we're going to use our number eight round craft brushes an awful lot. You can see when they're pristine like this, you have that nice point there. But then when they're a little more worn down, a little more well used, now they become almost like a filbert brush. But you'll notice, see that still have a nice sharp point there. 
but now I've got this nice soft curved edge that I can employ and unlike say a standard filbert brush or flat that's very short bristle tends to flay out this is not see so you just have you can have more paint in there you can just do more with it Unless this is definitely something we're going to employ and probably especially in the early stages some of our makeup sponges right here now I'm going to have to change the focus. I'm going to have to change the brightness on this several times, depending on what we're working on. Whether it's a small piece, big piece, especially early on, the setting's going to be a little bit lower for brightness because most of this primer here, it's a Badger Steiner Res, various shades of green, light tan, yellow, and some white. So right now I have to kind of tone the volume down a little bit so that we don't get this all burned out. The base was some dried moss over here. We got some cork. We got a little bit of tree branch. Some more dried foliage here. So again, just something to give it a foresty, maybe even a swampy type of look. So what we're going to do next is get some colors out on the palette. And we'll do some initial glazes, some shaded base coat. See just what we want to do with this color scheme. We're going to get things started off with the wing. Just right away, get stuck into this. Let's see what we can figure out color scheme wise. Now, the names of these colors, they're not not like the other brands where you're trying to get cute with the names. It's pretty basic. I think you've got a dark umber, a light umber, sky blue. What is this one here? This is dark gray blue, jade. What's the other one here? This is faded ultramarine, it's an ivory, guess what, orange, and a golden brown. So not real complex with the names, more like I say, a traditional paint where you'd have Van Dyke brown or Spurred Sienna, something like that. So I know we want our little symbol or our little eye over here. We have to see what's going to happen over here. See, there's lots of little different textures, all that. Let's start to just glaze in some things here. So I'm going to take some of this light umber here. And see, so the wing is divided into two pieces, just like it is on the butterfly. Uh, make sure that's in relative focus for you. A couple things that you almost have to remember about these paints is that they'll stay wet. A little bit longer, mostly on the palette. They're just—they're not going to dry out on you quite so fast. They—they they are really, really matte in, in terms of how they dry. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And you can see this is all just a. Let's figure out what we got going on here. So I'm just gonna put out a little bit of this. All right. We looks like as you get towards. The core of the wing here, where it joins up with the body, that's just going to be more tan. Yeah, just doing this in sort of a glazing type fashion. Let's get a little bit of this jade here. Touch of this jade. I can actually see when you look at the reference picture, all the little kind of striations of support in those wings. So we're just going to let this do some wet into wet blending here. I can see I'll have to make a few adjustments from what I originally thought because I want to have some my orange over here so I can get away with some of that there. I also want to have that black black and then yellow over here. So we're going to go with the teal up here. And we're going to actually then mix the two together. See, this is what I just love about this stuff. I almost do a watercolor type thing. I'm just going to let these colors mix together real nice. Might even mix them together here. Like so. Oh, kind of that makes a nifty green. That right, makes sense because you got kind of a yellowish brown and sort of a bluish green. So why not get ourselves some nice green out of that. Okay. We know we want some 
jade in here, but I'm going to get a little blue there. Pop this right over here. Even a little bit there. Touch over here. I'll let that sit for a little bit. And now, let's see. So we have a second. I'm going to try and do one of these little eyes up here. Now, of course, we have all these holes in the wings. That is certainly not on our reference at all. So we'll try and figure this out. Now we've got this now. And what we're going to do is take some, maybe a touch of that darker umber here. Let's just try and mark this off. And I like it here. See, I've got this right there. Let's go. It'll have black in it. Black in the form of I'd rather take blue and brown, mix those together. All right, so let's do our thing here. A little bit on the end, like so. I'm going to get an orange in here. That's going to be dark. Again, I'm just making little notations, like a little bit of a sketch here. That's going to be light around there. And you have to be willing to kind of let it be an unholy mess. Uh, there's really no other better way to describe it. Sometimes you just got to let it do what it's going to do. And what we're going to do, speaking of letting it do that, I'm going to let this draw. I'm going to set that off to the side. We have another small piece while well, we got the way this is focused. So here, do we do orange or do we do more brown? Or do we do a jade, almost like it's a jade weapon? Now, the blue eyes would stand out more from something that is orange maybe some orange almost like it's rusted so let's give that a shot here so we got some of that orange we'll take a touch of the light umber mix that in it's going to go right in here straight away because what i want to see is can i do stuff like I always do with the secret weapon weathering paints. Because I think you've seen a few of these videos already. I think I've done two exclusively with these paints from Creature Caster slash Slow Fuse Gaming. Let's get that filled in. I've done a couple of them so far. But this is the first one where I'm going to really see what happens with the web blending. What I'm going to do is take that off camera. Here's another thing that I like to have. It's a piece of pink foam. What I can do is basically stick this in there and it's going to hold it for me and not let gravity attack what I've been doing. So I'd set that on its side with all that watery stuff. And then I'm going to have some issues with that. So let's go here like so. I don't know, I may change all this, I may go with something more magenta, but since there is a fair amount of orange out there, at least on a reference picture, I want to stick with a little bit of that. Now I, what I can do also is throw some red out here if I feel that the orange is just too, too pale. It's almost a little bit on the tan side right here. So I'm going to off camera again. I've got my little thing of foam work in there. So we've got some red. We'll just throw it out there on the palette next to the orange. Not a lot of it. Just a touch. Make sure it's still on the palette cam. There you go. Watch what happens when we mix a touch of that. See, it just enriches the orange a touch gives it a little more of a reddish look and let's go back here we definitely want some orange up in this area or else oh we want it down here that's right so down there 
What do we have? We're going to continue this right along here. Stop there. This is, oh, yeah, this comes down here a little bit. The holes are just a crazy thing that I'm just going to have to negotiate a little bit here. Just figure out what's going on. So I just took some of the brown and mixed that in. And now I'm doing a little bit of orange and umber transitional stuff, like so. Some of this is a matter of timing. I had to be patient here. You can see some of this is still pretty wet. And you do have to consider that it is winter time here. Now, it, it's not been... 10 degrees for a week like usually happens in near mid-January. Still, this is definitely a drier climate right now than summer and that's not doing too badly as far as how uh, wet that is. Now we need a couple of these orange, orange marks here. So let's do... So in the reference picture there, it, it, there's that greenish transition, and we were able to get that here. Let's do one of these guys. Yeah, we'll do a second one. Like that. And I, I do want to have a little bit of this. See how the colors are sort of blending together? This is... This is something I wanted to see. What was going to happen? How would it blend together? Would it be a lot of watermarks? Would it be more smooth? That's why I talk about experimentation all the time because you never really know how something's going to work until you experiment with it. Here, let's get that down just a touch. You can see it. See, we're doing a little more of that blending there. Pulling some of this together. I'm going to let that sit for a second. And guess what? We're going to go back to these guys here. Let's see what happens if we do something like this. We're going to take some of that dark umber. We're mixing it with the red in effect. Making a little bit of a burnt sienna here. And... Again, I just want to see what happens when this has a chance to mix together a little bit. What's going to happen? Because I know what happens with the secret weapon stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I know what's going to happen there. I don't know what's going to happen there. Why not try it out? So now I've got back to some of the orange. It's got more of the reddish element to it. And I know that to you guys, this is just going to say, what in the world is going on? What is what is he doing? Now, it won't take too long before there's some rhyme and reason to the madness. So we've got our little magical makeup thing here. And we're going to take away some of this. Not all of it. Just going to take away a bit. And see what's revealed underneath. And see how much is coming off. Not doing it equally everywhere. Just a few places. And guess what? You can see we've got some really quick shading on that. But see how there's variation to it. So I'm actually just, no, I'm just kind of sponging away some of that excess. So that's a nifty experiment. I wanted to see what was going to happen when I did that. So again, experimentation is always, it's helpful because you just never know what you're going to find. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Some of these sponges I see have been around a while and have gathered some dust. 
Yeah, see how it's, it's starting to settle down into those crevices right there? So, who knows, maybe it gives that a little more of a corroded look. All right. And we can even... Well, let's grab something that's a little lighter here. Let's take some of that ivory and mix it in with our orange color. Just making sure you can see that. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, so this is unlike, say, the Reaper Clears, where you can... I hate to word, use the word transparently, but you sort of can. More translucently. This stuff, it covers really well. That's another thing you have to factor in. It's, it's, it's a little different than the paint I'm used to. So let's compare this side to that side. So that's this side now. I'm going to do a little bit of that here to bring out some lighter tones along here. Where's my... There it is. So let's hit this top edge like so. And maybe here. See a few here. And this hasn't completely dried yet. There's still some moisture in some of those spots. And we certainly have not gone to our lightest highlight. That's, as I preach all the time, it's something we save till the very end. So let's see if we can get some light along the top edge of our weapon here. Touch of that. Back along here, along the center line here. And back to, so I'm going to take that lighter, almost white color there and go back into some of these ribs here in the weapon. So now it's a different coloration. It's What's done is toned it down a little bit to grade it down. And it's a little different shade of this reddish color here. You can go in with some blues even later on, some accents on this this guy here. But that worked out. That was a nice little quick experiment here. Let's go back to our light color again. See, I'm actually, look at this. This is again the advantage of the big brush. All I'm doing See how that, that was one stroke? Just blended all that. Look at the, I call it marbleizing. Look at that on the brush, on the end of the brush there. So I just literally let the color do its own thing. I just let the color mix it together. Because, you know, somebody else, well, actually it was several somebody else's, because it's usually multiple artists working on a on a individual figure, as far as the way Creature Caster works. They did a lot of work sculpting that. You know, you just have to bring it out a little bit with your paint. So let that, you know, let them do some of the work for you and let the brush do some of the work for you. And just set it on its side like that. Uh, make sure you can see that. Sometimes it's a little balancing act because I have to see it too. I also have to be able to get my hand in the right position, so... Sometimes we we have to do a little compromise or it's easier for me to see it then. Maybe it is for you. So your handle here. Now let's do something on the hand. I take that brown and a little bit of the blue. And we're just kind of... I need some context here. And that's something you're going to hear me talk about. You hear me talking about all the time on the painting videos. If you haven't seen one of these before, well, be ready. You're going to hear about it a lot. The idea of context is, well, this blue here, it changes what the rest of these colors look like that we just put in there. And guess what? I was talking about putting a little of the blue in there. See, it's just some accents here. And all of a sudden, what was 
really light. Doesn't look so light anymore. That's why I don't prime things just straight up white or straight up black. So we'll we'll do something different here when it comes to the final skin tones, but the whole purpose of this is to take some of that dark blue, some of that umber. Maybe bring a little bit of the light umber back in. Gonna darken down this handle. Just like that. I'm gonna use one of these sponges that's a little softer side. So there's again that glaze we're talking about. See? Now there's a touch of shading there already that we can build off of later. Now let's take look at the difference there. So here we have something that's almost starting to look a little bit like copper. Just kind of absent-mindedly made copper. Hey, what do you know? That's what we've got here. Our two weapons. Now, what I want to do is go back to my wing here. Because that's probably had a definite chance to dry out some more. And guess what? we got that ivory over there. Let's throw a little bit of that golden yellow in there because we don't want white at this early stage because look at how bright that is already that's pretty bright all right so the black's gonna come over to here once again I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do here so that's gonna be the other little circle over there and now down here I'm just gonna brush that over the top and here's our eye over here and we're gonna just go right in here with that like so gonna take some of our light umber right here go over some of this that we just put down even a touch of that I just want to blend some of that out now this one I'll probably I don't want to say finish it more but I'll take it more to a completed state maybe than say other parts Just because I've got a, or like the other wings, I'll do those more in a assembly line fashion, I guess. Let's use that word. So let's see. I do have just coal black. We're not going to use a lot again. Just want to here. A little bit of that out. Gonna mix it with some of the umber. Get a little bit of water in here just to thin that down a touch and let's put some of these markings right here now that I've got that white there I, I see I can go a little bit more with the black I can extend that out to here yeah let's do that Gonna put my dark bit right down here and there's sort of a semi outline down there. And now what we got here is not really a black there, but there's gonna be the outer edge, outer rim here. like so and again you, you have to keep in mind that this stuff is going to stay wet for longer it's a timing thing I know with the Reaper stuff and the secret weapon stuff I know just how long that's gonna 
take the dry. This is going to be a little longer. I can't tell you what it's like on a wet pellet because I don't use one. So that is something you will have to just experiment with and figure out uh, on your own if you use one. Yeah, and it's just, it's not something that I use. It's not something I'm ever going to use. As my training is as a watercolor artist, and, well, we just, our palettes were wet just by virtue of doing watercolors. I didn't really need any extra moisture on the palette. There's that, and we'll just throw a little outline there. We've got another section of black up here and see if we can do one more eye over there too maybe here except there's a bit of a hole right there where I might want to do one we'll see now we also have some black markings over here on either side I don't, it doesn't really completely surround that orange so we're just going to go with that. Mm, what else are we doing here with this darker color? What I'm going to do is take a little bit of that blue now, some of that darker umber. We're going to do a few little washes in here, pick up some of those shadow areas places where this is dried and to keep in mind this is all we're trying to do here is just get a sense of well, what is it that we really want to do here you know how intense do we want that blue slash jade slash turquoise to be how sharp do we want these lines to be here So let's go in with, speaking of orange here, let's make a slightly lighter orange. And I'm going to go down here. See how that's a little bit lighter now? because we let the orange mix in let it mix in a bit with the other that tan the was it the light umber all right let's go right here see i'm starting to at this point now use a little bit of directional brush strokes here because I see this pattern emerging in the reference picture here, this where it kind of spirals out a bit. And I'm going to do this here. And I don't want to get bogged down into just one area. Now, normally I would be bouncing around all over this thing, but it makes sense to stick within stuff like the wings or that weapon because we just didn't know if these markings were even going to work and you know, they weren't going to work from the get-go well, I certainly don't want to have all the rest of that work in I think this is another reason why people are constantly stripping down miniatures I never strip a miniature ever see here I can so I'm extending. This is another reason why I use this brush. I'm just going to go flat with the brush. It's not a dry brush. There's a ton of paint on that brush. Let's see how we can almost merge these bits together. So I'm just dragging this over here. It's cutting over that one line. It's blending it a little bit. And let's go with a touch more of just straight up ivory in this area up here again I'm, see, I'm just dragging it over the top it's got plenty of paint on the brush but 
kind of by default we're getting some mixing happening here see that it's I'm just scumbling the paint over the top of that and yeah, let's see if I can get that and we're starting to we're getting there we're getting there and see I can again do the same thing now just there's a lot of little striations here in the wing it's even sculpted on here and I see it on the reference too so why not try and bring it down onto the from the reference to our actual miniature so again these striations here it's almost like you're painting well an eye and the eyes don't have they have a lot of these crazy little striations here all those different little rods and everything else that's going on in the eyes see now we're starting to make a little more transition in some places now let's go back to our light umber here and the other thing is I like to keep the segments here to between 30 and 40 minutes so what I'm going to do is work with this for a few more minutes and what we're going to do then is switch maybe to the base because I've got a lot of the darker shades out here and well, we don't want to just waste paint and the base will use up paint in a hurry so we'll after this and we'll let this settle and dry a little bit we'll head over to the base and we'll work on that next again all of this is the initial phases because remember the base I want it to maybe be some kind of swamp type thing and I have to see alright do I want the effectively the bottom of the water to be a certain color so let's take the jade and our uh, that light umber we'll mix that together and see how now we're just using I like to call it an underlayment so we're getting a little more variety in this now this is more of a greenish color and like I said there's there's gonna be times where okay I have to go away from the reference and sort of make a call an executive decision as we say to maybe change a color pattern just a touch because yes there's your reference but sometimes the the law of results matter so that's, now we can change this a bit we're going to take some of this light blue and mix that with our jade change that color temperature a bit because these are fairly substantial wings why have just the same turquoise everywhere this is also effectively a chaos demon and well chaos means kind of usually a frenzy of color and that's what we're doing here we're going to provide that frenzy of color that's starting to you know it's just a touch of the ivory in that and we don't want anywhere near a highlight we're trying to keep within some of those striations that we see sculpted in the figure here so now the wing hit gets a little bit of depth that way what do we got here? So, do that. And I'm going to emphasize that little point down there a little more than maybe what you might see on the reference picture. So, as we start to add 
basically light middle tones at this point when you think about it you're already starting to see so many different levels emerge on these wings now let's not forget our greenish color here and I'll take it just a touch of that all the while this is the reason I use these bigger Right, and this is the other thing too. I was talking about holding the brush. You can see there's none of this. There's none of the, uh, my hands gripping the handle here. It's it's relaxed. I'm still doing some reasonably precise stuff here, but just gently holding the brush, caressing the brush. There you go, kind of a Bob Ross type thing there. The happy brush with the happy wing. Can't have happy stuff here attacking it like that so it's easier to have happy stuff when, when you're a little more gentle with the brush so you were just right here just moving along really free nice free brush strokes and lighten that up a touch And there, see, that's nowhere near the lightest color, but look what that's, what that's starting to do there on your wing. Look at what that's starting to do. Now, what it, I'm not going to do is, you know, the other wing and just repeat that. I, what I might do is portions of it because this really was about settling down on what the wings were going to look like. Here's a little transition thing we're doing. We're pulling the blue into the tan here. Again, another one of those somewhat executive type decisions we're going to make. Here, let's get a little more of our greenish tone here so we have a little bit of transition with our orange touch there and now then go in here like so look at how that just starts to what was before was kind of an uncontrolled mess it really was an uncontrolled mess again we were just setting up these future layers of color and guess what there's more after this too there's more on the way here we go look at that see I don't want to wipe out my bluish color there look at how much lighter we can still go with this let's get some of that yellow in there so we don't get it too too far away from that Switch this back. I I like what's happening here. Maybe with some of that lighter green on that bit there. There's some almost like some spikes there. You'll notice with the creature casters to have a lot of little little things like that on the in unexpected places. They really tried to. I want to say give you a lot to work with. Here, let's just do a few of these. Let's transition into some of our brown. I guess you see I didn't didn't well what clean the brush at all. See our colors mixed together and look at this. Look at that nice easy transition that we get. So just cleaning the heck out of the brush, get rid of all of the that color that you already had in there. I mean, why do that? You know, you had that color right there. Why just annihilate it like that by just cleaning it out of the brush? Leave it in the brush, use it. So I'm getting a lot of nifty things here on our wing. that we haven't really been doing this very long and I can guarantee you from this point if I was to do 
you know the the second wing it's going to take a whole lot less time because I know I know what colors that I'm using I know where they're going to go so I'm going to even get some of that out here okay I'm going to put some of that here so you're going to see this this color here what I've been doing with this you're going to see that a lot on the rest of the miniature when it comes to the body it just makes sense let's again compared to the other wing this is what we've done here in not a lot of time let's get a little bit of the black here mm. and I, the more I look at that wing there's just it's not pure black anywhere I don't want to I mean pure black but it's not that solid just the the actual shape of it is not that solid so, so I'm gonna try and get some of these striations like so yeah the more I look at the reference picture the more it's really starting to mimic what's going on here so see that's why I'm gonna get some of these I think you can see them here as soon as I do this see looks like I got a little dust here on there And this is another thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to follow along into, see that, just a touch. And we need to do a similar thing here because that's just a, that's just a hard edge right there. It's not matching up with all of those striations we were talking about. So let's do some of that. And again, it's because there's still wet paint here, which is really cool because I can work with that. See, it, it, instead of it being black, it's transitioning into something else that softens that edge a bit. Starts to make a little more sense, but I had to draw it out effectively, draw it out first. That's just kind of how it had to be. Ah, some dark umber here. I'm going to do the same thing, just like what we were doing with that black color. How about some of that here? This is the other reason why I separated out the wings, because, wow, it would have been really tough for you to see this. I, I've had to do, as far as just painting stuff, I've had to hold things in a more awkward fashion, so... It, the holding of it wouldn't have been that big a deal. Just no way you guys would have been able to see what the heck I was doing here. Not a chance. Mm, let's go back to our number here. This is going to be almost a little more liquidy here. That's a word. I make up a lot of words during these videos. Something you'll find out if you haven't seen them already before. You're going to hear that a lot. Crazy words, gym words, gymisms. I don't know what you want to call Wapalisms. Maybe that's a better. See, you just made another word. And I may just go maybe darker on the end there. Back to some of that ivory here. We're going to go... Now in the other direction, see how it's now a nice kind of a grayish color in there? Look at that. We're going to do that here, along here. Just finding all kinds of nifty transition. And as we do that, everything starts to soften just a touch. So you're going to get rid of that hard line there. Take a little more of this lighter color here so I'm just I'm having fun I'm hoping that something like this I usually don't do multiple episodes on one figure but I think you can imagine this guy is well this lady sorry lady of anguish 
It's a little more complex. So here, let's get that a little further away so you can see it more as a whole. Let's get some of this dark back in here. Like so. So I'm back to my more rapid strokes here, but again, still see how I'm backed out of it. Not don't have that death grip on the brush. We don't want that. So we I think we've pretty successfully determined what it is that we want to do on these wings. I really like that. So what we'll do next again, like it's so just we get down to the base, we'll figure out what we want to do with that. Those mushrooms. Are we just going to do them, I guess, more realistically, as I don't do little uh, hand quotation marks because I've got something in my hand. I think we're going to want some purples in there because if we're doing those intestines the way I think we're going to do them, we're going to want some purple in there. So see, just a few things here in transition. There, you got yourself some wings. Now we'll do again. While we got this stuff here out on the palette, let's head down to the base and to the main body of the figure. So we talked about working on the base and also on the body of the figure, just figuring out what we want to do there. And again, the this was primed with your typical Badger Steiner wedge. You can brush this on or you can use an airbrush. Either way, this is one of the colors that I use. It's sort of a light tan. What we'll do is we'll just start to throw some glazes down in here. We'll figure out what we want to do with some of the mushrooms and fungus. So we've got one of these that's a little more beat up, and we're just going to start to, if I had a spray bottle, I'd just spray some more water in here. What I have found is that a little goes, tends to go a long way with the creature caster slash slow fuse paint. So first, what are we going to do? I'm going to get down here into my shadow rays. Now the camera may bounce around a little bit and I apologize for that. I'll try and do this here so that we'll do that a little less. Sometimes I'm just going to grab straight up paint, get down in here. Yeah, this is pretty nice quality resin so you shouldn't have to worry about things breaking really hack away at it here and this whole base here with all the fungus and everything I think you saw in the pictures that is that's how it comes that's how you get it and I just incorporated it as you can see onto a wooden plaque used some again this is bulletin board cork here that I'm painting over I see, you see a lot of people using the tighter cork. Now again, context. Look at the difference. I'm going to put that over there. So it looked really dark. All of a sudden, not so dark. Now here's another thing that I'm also going to do is make myself a bit of a green here. So I'm just going to grab some of that jade. And I'm already going to start to think about what's going to be on that forest floor and look at how that how it just starts to blend together watch this and just letting it do its own thing there so think of it almost like foliage that's sort of sunken uh, you know just sitting there laying on the bottom of the pond or the swamp or whatever I'm going to throw some water effects over the top of that. Look at that. That's why I want to do that one little edge for you. Yeah, now you can see it. 
And let's say you wanna, now I could sponge that on too if I wanted, but hey, this is fun too. See, all I can do is, see how the brush just, it's kind of beat up there, it's, it's frayed a bit. Look at that, look at that. See, I get a little bit of that bright jade in there. Look at that, just a lot of fun. Starts to look almost like lily pads. I could have sculpted those in. I do actually have, I think that's a video I'm going to be posting for some of the patrons there. It's uh, my I think swamp bases. I don't think I posted that one yet. I think the last one I did was forest bases. Where it's kind of like logs and other things that I sculpt with this epoxy sculpt. So yeah, I think I'm gonna this this particular month be loading that up for my patrons. And again, if you're not already part of the Patreon page experience, there's a few different levels. There's the five dollar level, and that gets you access to more general type things. You know, where I say, okay, now here's something fun that I've kind of learned a new new thing with maybe basing or when I started using these creature caster paints. You know, something that I think is new and nifty that you might like to see. That's something I do f say for everybody. I also have a $10 pledge level. A couple of those, one is geared towards, well, guess what, basing like this. And there's others that focus in on dark sword miniatures and black heart models, busts. And then there's the $15 Army Painter series, and that's, it's a multi-purpose thing. It lets you see stuff like this, which is neat, but the main thing is you get to see how I work on entire units. So most people do single figures. I think you've seen that plenty of places. One thing I've never seen anywhere is where on a regular basis, sometimes multiple series in a month, somebody takes you through from basing to all the way through final completion, all the way through the process of painting your unit, pointing out ways to make it easier to do more in less time. Because none of us has infinite amount of spare time for things. That's just how it is. And that's whether it's one of these episodes, I try and point out some ways to either save time or just make things a little more efficient. Maybe that's the word, not cutting corners, just increasing efficiency. That's what we like to say. So what happens here when, said again, it's about context. So that stuff under the it's on, on the water there underneath this branch. Starts to take a little different tone there. Yeah, so we keep going here. Look at how that's starting to dry. See how I have a darker color that can even go back in with some of that darker color. See how it's still even, even though it's on the wood. Now, of course, it's been primed, and that helps to... It helps to prevent it from drying too fast, but yeah, definitely love that this stuff does not dry super fast. It lets a crazy person like me just manipulate the paint a little bit more. So again, I'm sorry I'm mashing into the camera. There is not a lot of space for me to work with, and... That is another reason why I've got the Patreon thing going. Because while I have some camera equipment, basically I was able to put together a nice setup here for smaller things. And by smaller things, I mean your standard 28 millimeter figure, maybe something that's Terminator sized, ogre sized, whatever. This is most definitely putting that limit to the test. You know, I'd, I'd much rather have the camera setup be a little bit different for this. 
It's one reason why we're kind of focusing in on just one area like the base here. When it comes to the rest of the body, what we're going to do is draw back out again. So here we go. Here's our more of this black here, and now let's do another. Finish this off like so. So we've darkened that down. Now let's get ourselves some a little bit of a color down in there, and let's grab some of this green. Start to incorporate this. Here we are. Nice and watery, let it push itself around. And start to think about up here too. So yeah, let's grab some of that jade, mix it with our other uh, ochre, yellow ochre, like that. So I've got our green, look at how nice and wet that is on the brush. And then what we're gonna do, just plop that right in there and scumble that brush around. You will, if you do sign it, or if you are, have seen me paint marble at all, you recognize that. Because that is something I kind of do when it comes to painting marble. So now I got a little more, see that, speaking of marble, there's a little bit of marbleization in that brush. And let's get so you can see it. Boom. Just a few. Drop in some of those. I suppose one of the reasons why I like to do it when this is water, see, how, look at how that's that's a nice, almost like an airbrushed transition there with no airbrush. No airbrush is harmed in the painting of this, that's for sure. And let's start to incorporate a little bit of that green into some of these rocks here. We're also going to put foliage on here. Like I said, this is a these are full service tutorials here. We take you all the way through everything. Try never to have that whole oh look and now out of nowhere something is completely done. I'm gonna throw green on a few of these. Just some. Not all of them. Because we want that to be on our rocks for the most part here. So we let some of that dry just a touch. Back to this to the black over here and just gonna put it around the edge. Now it's mostly black. There's just a lot of old paint that's still in the brush. Here let's get along our edge here. I've got my brightness turned way down. Let's turn that up a touch and see what we have. So now we're at kind of normal brightness. And I'm going to turn it up just down a touch. Here we go. I'm going to do some of this here along this edge. And you'll really see it. That just makes such a dramatic difference in terms of contrast sets that off really nice not worried about painting this base yet I just want that transition now we talked about not always green on our fungus so I just mix a little bit of uh, our browns I want some of these to almost have a little bit of that orangey red in them too. So, doing a lot of transitions here, but see? Yeah, the hand gently working the brush. And if I really want to, again, this stuff stays, it stays wet for so long. We can even try a little wet into wet here. Some of our fungus. I'll take away some of the excess. There's another thing we can do. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. Took away some of the paint, flatten that out. Let's get that. Ah, you can see it. 
How's that? Any of you that have seen me work with oils say, holy smokes, that's what he does with the oil paints. And I've essentially discovered that the way these guys work, the creature caster paints, look at that, almost like an oil paint transition right there. So, again, another thing to potentially think about. Look, see, that's still, still wet over there. What we're going to do is take a little bit of that green, mix it in with some of that yellow. We're going to do that. We need a little more yellow, I think. Yeah, a little more of that yellow. See, we got the brush spread out to be like a filbert brush. What are we doing here? Boom. Some of the original glaze, that's still there. Well, guess what? I don't mind that being pulled out onto my little funguses here. See, that just happened over here. Let's spin around, you can see it. See how it's... That's all, this big old batch of water. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to try and do a little bit of that wet blending over here. Why not? Why the heck not? Yeah, let's do some of that. I don't want to forget about things like the tree branches here. Let's go back into our funguses here. Fungi, yeah, I know, that's probably what you would call them, but it's late. I film these things really, really, really late for a variety of reasons. You know what? Grab a little touch of that red there. And change this just a touch. So see what I did right here? I'm going to do it again over here. Yeah, because look at how that just, it wet blends practically like oils. See how there's a transition here? Almost like green to red. So these were the kind of things I didn't know if I could do with this particular paint. Some of the other figures that I've tried to do this with, it just just the nature of what I was painting. The, the, the figure itself didn't call for these type of transitions, so I didn't get a chance to try that out. This is a little different story. So now see, I'm taking some of that red and, well, red-ish, brown. And let's get some of that on our, our mushrooms here. Always Again, thinking about lots of different transitions. Let's go back to our... What is that called? Mm, where did you go? That's not the light umber. That is this. It's the golden brown. That's what that is. So got a little more of the golden brown. Here, let's get some of that out of the brush. And I also have to think, too, that these, the fungus that's up here maybe should catch a little more light than the fungus that's down here. So you can see just how nice and soft that is. And this is just an initial little shaded base coat. That's why I call it that. It's just scoping out where some of these colors are going to go. How light do we want things to be? Here's yeah, more of these. Like so. Yeah. So these are, I'll let these, some of these get more yellowish. Mm, looks like, looks like the orange is finally dried. That's okay. I can put more out there. So here I'm just 
Sometimes I'll even use my finger to blend things. Now it's great that I've been doing all this stuff on these fungus platform things hanging off, but I also need to think about what's happening with my rocks. I've been doing the tree branches. Well, guess what we got sitting out here? We got a little bit of our bluish stuff here. I'm just going to make a, almost like a purplish gray. Look at how I've been able to really fan out this brush. That's handy. Because now we're going to throw a little bit of that on our rocks. That's fine. I can, there, there's some points where I can't actually tell what is the original rock from the creature caster base and my what do you call it here my uh, bulletin board cork now sometimes the yeah we got that wet wash color on there what we're gonna do is now we really fan that brush out I'm just gonna not dry brush over the top there's plenty of paint on there you know what we're doing we're letting that all mix but it's going to be a little different color than say the mushrooms because we're using that sort of purplish type color there what the heck let's throw a little of that blue gray color in there you think what in the world well once it starts to mix with that other color Now we're getting a little bit of difference between that and our fungus that's hanging off of the uh, rocks here. And as it, just like if this was made out of, or made out of, this was painted in oils. See, so here's the other thing I'm going to do is start to think, all right, what do I want to do with this stuff? I'm just starting to make sure some of that goes up there. Because you want to, you don't want to isolate colors. If you're going to use purple somewhere, you got to use it everywhere. That's another, I think I've said it a few times, I got to start making t-shirts with some of these phrases on it. So just using purple in one place only, now you got this isolated color. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's very jarring. To look at man, what, what what's going on with that something is something's distressing my eyeballs it's usually because there's just one orphan color in there that just looks like it doesn't belong I think we're just hitting these and remember if I'm gonna put foliage over the top of these I have to think well what kind of foliage is it going to be and obviously it's going to be some kind of green flock. So I have to think these, these rocks need to be dark enough to actually show the green flock. So let's not do too much. Especially since we haven't gotten much paint on the figure yet either. You know, let's move one of these lights so you can see that a little bit better. And let's continue now. Let's throw a few more lighter tones on those little fungus things. And I'm also going to get some of that orange back out on the palette. And I'll bring the wing out here for just a second because this is another important thing. <clears throat> you want to set up contrast, right? which means I don't want this to have a whole bunch of bright colors on it that would interfere with this. I want this to complement this. But guess what we got here? See how we're starting to mimic some of those same greenish-browns even in the swamp area there. So even though this is separated from this by its color, there's still some unity there between that and this wing. I try to, you know, that whole thing, that's all color theory. You know, the big scary color theory thing. I try not to, 
you know, have a big trumpet fanfare and say, look, we're talking about color theory. Try to just sneak it in there. So it's a little less, a little less scary, whatever. It doesn't have to be a big deal. I think just, well, I think sometimes we all make certain things more complicated than they really need to be. So I'm just going to take my finger there, wipe some of that away. Because you just, you don't need to think, oh my gosh, that color theory, I need a color wheel, and I need to check colors and formulations and everything. Well, you can become a prisoner to that stuff. And while it may be, it can be helpful, it can also maybe restrict some of your decisions that you might make. You might make a less bold color choice somewhere because the color wheel says no. Mm, do this. Now, remember I've got that little touch of red out here. I'm going to grab a little different brush just so I can get at some of this stuff here. What do we got? And let's do something like this because we have a color somewhat like this out there. Looks like you can see what I'm doing and it's it's not a pink at all. It's not a very bright dramatic color. And what I'm going to do is throw some individuality into these two, make some of them out a little more purple. But all I'm just all I want to do here is Yeah, see that? Just get in. See what that looks like. Let's try some here there's a couple. Here there's one. Like that. Boom. What the heck? I'm just gonna got some. Gonna throw some on the intestines here. And the idea is, if I've got purple glazes going over the top of that, and some of that shows through, all the better. Here, let's get a little lighter. Again, it looks. To all the world, like I'm just throwing paint everywhere. What's that? Controlled chaos, whatever. Yes, there's chaos. It looks like chaos, but it actually is very tightly controlled. Oh, I see here I'm finding more of these, these type of little funguses. Now, I... If I had more time to prep on this thing, if it was going to be something that I just did for me, or well, I don't really do the competition stuff, but if I was, maybe I, I sculpt more of these out onto these rocks. But in this one, I wanted to essentially try to feature the figure as is to the best degree that I could. So, yeah, let's do that. Here. And I'm gonna see that's now that's a little more purple right there. Yeah, I could put the little white dots on these. Yeah, I'm not gonna go that far. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I do. Because guess what? The little dots on these mushroom things here could then maybe mimic the eye. Who knows? Maybe even I paint something like little versions of the eye that's on the wing on those little tiny mushrooms. Nobody will ever notice unless they really look at it close. See, I'm, even now, I'm still thinking about the figure as a whole. I know I said I'm working on the base, and why is he 
painting on the figure here. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do there, but we'll do something. And there's a little of that that's still left alive. Let's see if we can mix that with the red here. Thin that down a touch. I think that's the other thing. If if you haven't seen me work on things before, you'll find out pretty fast that mixing paint is what I do. And people say, well, Jim, it's how do you match colors? It's easier to match colors because I'm not using a million different colors. How hard was it to keep this base in line with those wings when I was effectively using the same colors to paint the base? I was using to paint the wings. And guess what? I'm going to use those same colors on the figure itself over here. Now at a certain point, and this is something we'll t to get discussed in later episodes, when it comes to how much refinement you're going to put on the figure. You know, it's, I guess it happens maybe more with the so-called gaming pieces, but then this is, it's a gaming piece. It's meant to be used as a miniature. Creature Caster does make bases to fit these figures so that they are that you can use them for Sigmar whatever war games you might use these for so see now I've got that lighter color and lo and behold there's some kind of color on almost all of the intestines not bad for just so-called working on the base all right Now let's see just a little more light on some of these fungi here. Just again, I want to see how bright do we go with this? Do we go this much? So I can throw a glaze over that to tone it down if I wanted. There's one all the way down there. Now I still have. See some of that green from when we were working on the wings, and that's a little darker than this. We start to do a little more transition there. I think you saw that this paint can glaze reasonably well. Here, yeah, let's get this to be a little lighter here maybe even get a touch of that on this rock let's make some of these a touch lighter here like that and here Now this one definitely has nothing that's light on it. Both of these just need to be lighter. And then I can take whatever. Here's some of the initial wash color that I use. It's sort of like a black. Look at this. We'll just throw it over the top of that. Now maybe I kind of liked. Yeah, let's get this out here. You can see it. I had a couple of a uh, couple of splotches. I think maybe I like that. Maybe I'll do something like that. Again, it has not been determined yet what the final look of these is going to be. Do I have any of my? Yep, looks like there's still a little bit of that ivory color left. I'm not looking for a lot of it. And we're starting to get a little bit towards the end of what I wanted to do on this segment here. There's more to do on this, but again, we're going to leave that for another another time because I want to get to 
the body here, the main body. Here, let's. Especially these ones up here. Remember, we said we wanted those to be lighter. Now, let's do that then. I can take some of that paint away. Go over the top here. I can wipe some of that away. I can make it a little more greenish here. Let's get a touch more of the ivory there. And this is nowhere near the lightest color that I can put on that. I can actually go go even lighter if I wanted to. We're not going to do that at this point. There's another reason why I don't want to get too involved with these funguses and the rocks and everything because, well, I still have to paint that miniature. So some of the, you know, maybe water splatters or something happens. This is why another reason why I don't do just a whole bunch of one area and then try and somehow work around it. That's why I kind of work on all areas at once. And that way I'm kind of past the dirty work, I guess, if we want to call it that. You know, I'm really slapping paint around. So we'll just grab a little bit of this a purplish blue color here and we'll throw some lights on these rocks and then we'll just say that's it for this part of the base for now and then from here we can work on go back to working on the miniature itself and see just what we want to do there because that's going to be almost as much of an experimentation as the wings themselves. Plus I think I'm going to have to change the camera focus on that a little bit or back it out a little. So there you've got a nice start on your base. Really good initial colorize in here. And we'll just leave it. I'll leave it at that. So there you go, you've got your fungus, tried out some different colors, so now we'll do this part of the figure. Let's get into the main body of this miniature here. And what we've got to do is figure out, just like with the wings, and I'm going to bring that back out here. What kind of a pattern do we want? Do we want a lot of this turquoise in there? How much of the orange do we want? have to figure that out here. So my thought was, remember before, turquoise and what's almost like the filigree type area here. I think this is going to be more in the range of those transition to umber here some parts may be orange I think this is going to be almost more dark like some of the darkest parts of the wings here we'll see and this I don't want it to be real light in here anyways because it's just it's a shadowy effect that way so I want a lot of stuff happening there so let's get in and just start out with oh good our like I said this stuff stays wet for a while so we've got that light ember dark ember remember that's how we sort of started out and let's just start to place this here sometimes I may throw a little more water in there just to make it flow a little more I know some folks use things like flow improver and all that I used to use it myself, but eventually it just, I think when I just started to do more and more and more painting, I used it less and less and less and just went with straight up water. It just, 
I was doing so many things that it, the flow improver was a little too dainty for me. I needed something that worked for the massive amounts of stuff. And that was just straight up regular water. I'm going to throw a little bit of that here. All right. Again, this is the reason why we didn't want to get too heavy into... Here, that's a touch of the orange in there. On the base, because who knows what kind of mischief is going to happen now that we do this. And I just want to make sure I got paint everywhere. So I'm going to do the same thing here. On this area. And then start to grab some of that umber and... Gee, lo and behold, what are we doing? We're letting it mix. It's my favorite thing. I know for some of you it's going to be a little on the scary side. If you haven't really done something like that before, it's it's really... Again, some folks, they sometimes we discourage ourselves and make things more complex than they really are. It's just a matter of... You had some color out there, you threw another color next to it, and you're just letting the two of them do their thing. You also notice that I try to find some natural stopping points. Like here, I just stopped where the knees were. Here, I didn't, keep, didn't continue going down. Just made sense. So now let's get some of this. I grab a little bit of my that dark blue, right? Again, some of these cameras are just going to get whacked. It's, we have a very large object in a very small space. And for those of you that already support me on Patreon, I appreciate the support and I have basically I've gotten a lot of the smaller odds and ends that I need. I think I told you in a previous episode I actually was able to get another camera one that I could even use say for battle reports for terrain building it just seemed to have a larger area of focus than this I can go a little bit further back with it because this one I've basically got this at it's backed out as far as it can go so I'm just kind of limited by that So here we're just going to do some of this. And then it's time to grab some of our jade here. Don't want to get jaded. And now we'll do that transition. See how that works. I'm going to go this way with it. Maybe get a little, yeah, a little dark to let that transition down into this here. Maybe even a touch of that works its way out. See, I'm just going to grab some of that turquoise and literally just pop some of it out here and just let it do some stuff. Now there's a real technical precision type term. It's going to let it out there and do some stuff. Also here, let some of that green get out there. And I'm also I'm thinking multiple kinds of transitions here. Not sure what we want to do down in here yet. This, we're going to start going back to our umber colors. And again, using some natural stopping points here. Some of the light umber. And all the while trying to think of this as that shaded base coat. So here we've got that darker color it's going to transition out here so remember I had that hand I'm going to go back real quick here and mm, grab a little blue and 
and let you do some mixing there. And lo and behold, that is pretty darn similar. Ironically enough, to what I've just put there. I know it's hard for you to see, but it's actually pretty darn close. So that's not too shabby. So hopefully, again, some of this starts to make some sense for you. You can, now that you've got a little more, you're seeing a little more, you just have to say, oh, that's what that crazy person was trying to do. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, I yeah, wanted that to be a little on the darker side for whatever reason. Got some of the wet paint there. Just let it do its transition thing. Because I, I like the idea, you know, the whole butterfly thing, but I also don't want it to get too too cute. I don't know. It's a, don't want it to get too pastel-y. There's another crazy word for you. We'll have a whole dictionary by the time by the time these, well, the video series are never going to be done. They're just going to keep constantly coming out. <laughs> That's just because some of these things that, that you'll be seeing, they're just my regular work. To me, that's important that you see, quote unquote, regular work instead of just like like my armies. You see my armies going on, but you also see just some regular work because there are some of you that are trying to actually also maybe do a living at this and maybe this helps you with a few tips here and there. Alright, so we've got that area kind of settled there. What's going to happen with these lower legs? What are we going to do with those? I'm going to bring, going to bring my wing back out here again. Let's see, where would this wing go? I think it goes... Oh, does it go on that side? Yeah, it goes on that side. So I'm really glad I did my transition to turquoise there. Ah, see, I gotta make sure there's some of that orange in there. So what I will do is see what happens with this. Looks like that's still on the palette there. So we're gonna. Go more with that now. I think I like this dark armor transition, so we're going to do that here too. So we grab a touch of the black there. And guess what? Conveniently, these are supposed to be in shadow, anyway. So it's so darn dark, you, you can't even see I'm painting there. It's already in shadow, so I'm just being in the shadow of the paint lights. And all the while, I want to remember my blue here. So we have this transition. So basically what I want to maybe do here is a transition almost like what you see on the wings somewhat. And you can see how I can just really abuse the brush, just really smash this brush into there and not have to worry about the bristles or anything. These are hardy brushes. I clean them with rubbing alcohol. So I'll just transition that there. Now I'm going to see what happens for the heck of it. Let's see what happens if we do a little bit of greenish jade transition down here just for laughs.
because if it's only like on the wings and on her head and the the headdress it, again why why only up there is then the wings it it covers more of the area but see this is a more muted version of it so it's just all mixing with what's already there Let's transition that up so okay that's pretty well settled then and because this is wet it's kind of mixing together like we want it to now what I can do you know we've got some of these markings like the white stripe and these orange things you can try and let me put some of those on the legs here chest or even on the armor pieces here we'll just call them armor pieces they're probably not really armor pieces I'm gonna lighten this up just a touch and this is the other thing too see I like that right there that's the dark basically kind of turquoise thing down in there so yeah this is definitely Starting to work out how I had hoped. I'm just I'm just moving one of my lights here so I can see what I'm doing. So see what we just did there. See we're just we're doing the same thing over here. Look at how I've picked up. See how dirty the end of that is? It's essentially the same thing that happens when you're doing oil painting and you're blending. So like I said, those of you that have seen the oil painting episodes and have even done some Facebook Live oil painting episodes, that's not going to seem so unusual to you. Have, you'll, have, you'll have seen that many times before. But I even did actually a whole Army Painter series in oils. That was really fun. That was the Bolt Action Winter Russians. Now look what we're doing. Look at this. I can just scroll right over the top of this with my teal color here, but not too much. I want to go crazy with it. Uh, what's my saying that I came up with in the last video? More can be less. That's what it was. More can definitely be less. So see, now I can start to play off of what I've got. Now that I've determined somewhat what's going to happen, so I can start to highlight that. But guess what here? <clears throat> so here, see the light is that surrounding tan. Now actually, and here you have the dark is, is the tan. So, oops, sorry, I guess I didn't have that quite where you could see it. So we're doing the same thing over here. Again, thinking about all these different transitions. And this also down here, if I can get some more of that orange in it later on, now you start to get like the weapons did, that almost verdigree coppery look. So let's darken this down a touch. That got a little too light, too fast. Again, I'm just trying to find a good place where all of us can see it. That's better. It's a little too dark before. But I don't want to lose that nifty dark color there. But all the while, I have to keep in mind that I'm not even working with a middle tone yet. It's really a dark middle tone at most. So here on the armor bits. And what I will do in basically our last opening segment here if you want to call it that we'll break out the face and we'll figure out just what we want to do on that 
So again, all we're doing here is just figuring out what what is happening on this. Because remember, we still have our intestines here. I didn't want to quite hit those yet because I'm just I've got these colors that are wet out here, so I want to use them if I want to do the wet blending and stuff. So let's get into this collar here again while it's wet. That's why I wanted to grab that. See, I'm not doing it absolutely everywhere. And I'm setting up this teal here. And again, there's going to be, you know, I might go back over that with some glazes or whatever. I might throw some more highlights on it. Who knows? We don't know that yet. That is to be determined. figure that out once we get to those subsequent stages. Look at how all of a sudden that starts to look light down there. It really, again, is not a light color at all. And here, I see, I, I want that to almost have a little bit of purpleness to it, so I'm just going to throw a little bit of the, that's enough, like so here, and let's get into a little bit of our tans here. Gonna flatten out the brush. It's gonna be almost more reminiscent of what you saw on the wings. See how I'm sort of scumbling this? It's again, it's not a dry brush. It's again, it's, it's a lot like what I would do with the oil painting. Because there's all this texture in the miniature, why not find it and use it? Back here, let's switch more to an orange. I'm going to let that be dark here. Believe it or not, because I want the intestines here to actually be a lighter purple color. And what did we say earlier? If you want to have you want to have light, you must have dark, and vice versa. So again, we're going to use the old hand mixer. Gonna darken that down just a touch there. And yeah, we're just in the just in the opening stages of this. None of this is a final thing. We may be doing a pattern over the top of this. This. Maybe orange, who knows what's going to happen, but we just need to get a nice solid base in here first. And again, try and have as many opportunities for these color transitions. So here I'm trying to think of some of the same kind of striations that we had on the wings. Not highlights whatsoever. We don't want to be thinking highlights. We're just thinking mid-tones. Mid-tones actually is where a lot of, so much of the miniature happens. Or when I was doing 2D art, that was where most of the, most of the action was there too. It was all in the mid-tones. Mid-tones aren't anything super complicated. They're just that Kind of that zone between light and dark. And it covers a pretty wide, expansive range.
So not too shabby. Let's get some of that back here. It's a lot like how we were painting the base. Again, just I'm starting to notice these little kind of nobules here. Let me see if I can get that closer for you to see. I've got the umber over here. I'm going to bring that back. To darken it down again. Now I've got a little bit of the blue to mix in there. It gets it more towards the green. So again, we've got lots of fun color transitions happening here. Got back into a little bit of the orange there. And if that gets to be a little bit too much into the turquoise, I'm going to try and get rid of some of that. And some of that transition down there. Ah, good, we got some dark here. I just wanted to darken down this other hoof because it is a hoof. Most of them tend to have hooves for their feet, such as it is. A little dark there on the end of that. And let's see if there's any of that bluish color left. Because what we may do down in here, you know, let's say we take some of that dark blue and we can actually do a little bit of a glaze down in there. Maybe we don't like that, maybe we want it to be brown, but I kind of like the way that helps it transition. Now let's see if we get away some of the excess there. Now I'm going to go a little touch lighter here. Let's get some of that orange in there. It's almost going to start becoming maybe like a more natural skin tone. But just in one area. And let's get rid of some of the paint there. Yeah, we can wipe some of it away if there's too much. I'll let some of that carry up onto here. Because I've got the nice thing about those early layers that I did. There's a bit of orange almost in there from the original umber and orange that we mixed. So yeah, you are in some ways you're seeing some, some oil painting type things here. Even though it's technically acrylics. Well, not technically, it is acrylics. But I, I did use uh, use these to do a 2D painting oh, it's early, it's either November or something like that. And boy, I was able to, it was like using oil paints practically. That was nifty. All right, let's go. I'm going to go with the yellow and orange. I'm going to take a touch of the purple in there maybe. Here. And that's some of what's being used here for your intestines. So here we're starting to get a little separation there now. But that whole notion of not having those orphan colors. Yeah, 
Uh, let's get back over here now and use a bit more of this purple color. Because these intestines, now that we've done a lot of the other work on the body, we need to bring these out a bit. And then I'm going to go over these with some of that bluish purple color. I think we'll probably do that in the next well, part two, I guess we'll call it. This is, I think I'm just calling this part one at this point. Here, I'll just go. And this looks so light. And this color is almost dark. But compared to everything else on here, it looks light. And that's what I was hoping for. Let's see here. Where this is what I was hoping to set up. That yellowish and then the purple color in front. And you notice that I don't use the same color everywhere. I'm just finding parts of it because, well, these are their intestines after all. And you've got different, uh, so we say, things, substances in different parts of the intestines. So that kind of makes sense. And I'm actually going to get a little... I'm going to take this purple mix that with our I think we got a mahogany here it's a basically a dark reddish brown we're gonna throw that out on the palette too here and we'll let that mix in with this purple good you can see that and see what we're having here now we're starting to have the purple and turquoise balance out with each other a little bit. Because they're always, they're really nifty together. See, that's going to kind of go down inside. They're almost like it's in the crevices. Throw this out here. Take some of that away. We're going to throw a little bit in here. Cause I know I don't want to lose all of the turquoise and other stuff that's down in here. See, I can take some away where I need to. We've got some, essentially some exposed interior here. So let's go with our burgundy color there. Kind of representing some innards. Another real technical term. We're just loaded with technical terms today. And I see I don't have any on the other side of this. Now, there's some things that you'll just never be able to see me paint because it's just impossible. So there's some stuff that I will just save and not necessarily do on camera because there's no way to get it on camera. So you're just again, uh, roll this on here, take some away. Roll that on there. Take some away. And so we've got a pretty decent layout of what's happening here. I think it's so much more 
do on this yet. We're just in the opening rounds. All we're trying to do is figure out what is it that we want and where is that going to be. So I can even have a little that purple transition onto that other side of that uh, shoulder pad or shoulder armor, whatever you want to call that. So I'm just, in this here, really just trying to get that darker. Because, here, let me get some of this bluish purple color back out on the palette here. Just to show what that might, how that can influence what we've got here. And how much lighter that can be. Oh, okay, that's about where you can see it. So there is there is more of a purplish blue color and see that almost that just looks like a highlight already. It's not a highlight. Not a highlight whatsoever. But what it is, it just again it offers a little different color temperature than what we've had. It's a little bit lighter, but only slightly. And again, I'm letting some of this also mix together on its own. And we will go back in. Remember what we were doing on the wings? Yeah, we're going to be doing some of that here as well. So I can looks like I can see some ribs there, so I'm gonna have to do you know that could be more of a bone type of a color there. Cause let's see where are we at with this uh with this color here. Let's go even more of the blue and the white. I'm gonna take away too much of the but it looks like that's in a spot you can see. Look at how that changes everything. So now all of a sudden this, remember we were talking about this being lighter and the or, uh, rear end there being darker? Well, that's why, because we wanted this to show up a little bit. And see, that. look at how dramatic that is. And it also I think it's it away from the pink and more just towards a nasty color look. I can even mix a little bit of that other blue in there. See right away the difference that can make. Can let things blend together. And I'd love to do a whole bunch more, but we have to we have to hit that face, right, and just see what's going to happen with that. We don't want to get too far on other things because the face really is supposed to be the main attraction, not wings, not hooves, not mushrooms on a base. It really is supposed to be the face. So we will set this aside much as we want to keep fooling around with it and we will get to we'll get to that face one last thing to get to here and that's going to be our face and what I'm thinking is so this will have some of that jade right here or Maybe we go orange here, but I, I wanted this so-called skin color here to be almost more like what's on the front of the legs. Some turquoise under here, and so maybe then the eyes almost look a little bit like the eyes on the wings. And we're going to start this out in a similar way to what we did the last time around, but I need my light umber back out here. Just a touch of that. And we'll do just like we did 
and the horns I think those will also be darker and again I'm thinking about transitions everywhere here so here we're gonna slap this on there real delicate like and we'll go with some of the umber here like so actually does have ears still have some of that dark blue left and I'm just gonna draw this out See, I'm taking this and <clears throat> I'm just pulling it again sorry it's winter time doesn't matter how much water I drink that just kind of happens also been talking a lot here for several hours that also is a contributing factor so here's some of the turquoise and now we'll just get that darkened out I just added a touch of the black with it here we can add a touch more and just let that transition go a little bit light to dark like that that's gonna also be a little bit darker darker here and now okay we still have some jade left here might throw a little bit of the is this my dark gray blue looks like it just a touch of that out there so that can influence that jade a little bit and now we'll get that down into our crevices here and like I said there could be some changes headed for this too maybe I don't like all the turquoise on the head maybe I want to get some of that orange on there so this could maybe end up being dramatically different than what you see here who knows I try to encourage this sort of willing to kind of change in midstream right I also wanted to have remember I wanted some turquoise under here go with turquoise on these lips what the heck why not I'm just gonna move one of my lights here and make sure that the it's still plugged in there's about five lights surrounding me here so let's see I've got a little touch of my purple here so I changed the focus of my camera it's a whole lot closer than it was so remember when we're trying to carry things from winter to the next I'm putting this little bit of purple here because it's, it's what the intestines and other things yeah that might be severely lessened over the course of time we'll see how that works out and you know that you see me using a lot of larger brushes but you know I do have smaller ones here so uh, see what we can do here Let's get a little bit of the uh, umber mixed in. What do we got? There we are. And we'll just start to lighten some of this up. And by lighten, once again, what are we working in? More of a middle tone. So much of this paint is still wet. So it lets me, I'm even able to get a little turquoise in there. And once again, it's 
that notion of, oh boy, things really look like a big mess until they don't. And I know that that's not really a uh, necessarily something people like to hear, but that's kind of how it goes. So there's some of that orange mixed in. And I can see some of the same kind of structure that's in the wings, in the armor. Let's see how we've let some of the let some of those layers stick, stay, you know, the the underlayment as I like to call it. Here I'll go back into this. And now you can see we can bring out a little bit of, it's almost, I don't want to call them gills, definitely not gills, but something's going on there. Now, before we get too deeply involved with the face, let's see what happens with some of the jade stuff here. Sorry, i got to move my microphone cord. And so you can see what I was trying to set up here. Now we can go back into crown, headdress, head, whatever body part you want to refer to this as. And again, I might change things around and have it almost be more brown brownish down on the inside here the interior of these instead of just a darker jade now also sometimes you just say okay that's a little whoops sorry that's a little too it's just too wet for me to work on well that's why you have other places there's plenty of other place I could go back to the base. I could do all kinds of stuff like that. And this is the other reason I put the head on a separate piece here so that you could just see a little more, definitely a little more detail this way. Whoops. Boy, that's really... Basically, I've done exactly the opposite of what I had did with the base and the figure itself. Just moved it way, way, way in. It zoomed in as far as it can be, whereas before it was zoomed out as far as it could be. So let's start to... So again, these aren't actually highlights. This is just... We're just getting into a lighter color here, because what if I want to actually paint some kind of a pattern on here too? You know, it's a, I don't want to call them always just spots, but you see that sort of free hand on the face a lot. And as I start to add these lighter layers, that face just starts to starts to emerge. Like I said, there's two different heads. I had even contemplated maybe trying to paint both of them for you, but that maybe I do. It depends on how long the rest of it takes. I don't necessarily want 10 hours on just one miniature here because that could be just too much for some people to absorb. I know for sure there's going to be at least probably two more episodes to this because I want to do all the effects on the base. I think that the next one you'll see obviously much more detail work being done on the figure itself. 
I might get all the way to the final highlights and whatever freehand might go on to this. And then the, the base itself, I think that'll be its own episode because we'll have water effects, foliage, probably some dried leaves. There'll be plenty, plenty to take in information-wise just on the base itself. So it'll probably be its own episode. And like I said, this first episode here, it's kind of an introduction to how I go about painting these larger creatures. Or larger scale figures, you know, I guess if it's a, what, a 75 millimeter, 54, 100 and something, whatever, larger scale thing. So that's... Those next couple of episodes, those are going to be patron only. And pretty easy to find. It's just James Wapple, Patreon.com. It's pretty simple. So I've started to work this up. I, I have to figure out, okay, I don't want the eyes just to be white. Definitely don't just want the eyes to be white. Do I want them to be orange to really contrast with the jade? Let's see what happens. Well, it looks like I do have some orange out here. Yeah. So I was trying not to get too much orange into the, in the skin tone. And I'm not worried about the so-called lines there. You know, the eyebrows and eyelids. It's, we're going to be working on that with the rest of the eye. I also have to figure out, do I want these to be a glowing eye? Let's see, do I have... I'm just going to throw some more, some more of the white out here. Or my off-white, basically. Get that into the orange here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do the dark line around that. And that will help me determine should I really go in and maybe you know, put in some kind of a pupil or whatever. So we've got our jade over here. What's left of that? Yeah, let's grab a little more out of that. There's that little touch of black there. And let's get our Get an upper lid on this. See how that sharpens that up. We're doing the same thing here on the upper lid of the mouth and the lower lid. So that starts to, uh, we're starting to see the eyes emerge. In, in effect, this is an eyebrow that we're going to do here. Same thing on this side. And maybe even here. And this is, here, let's grab some of the jade again. This is where we have to figure, okay, do we do some kind of spots here? And if we do, how big are they? How pronounced are they? And all decisions that 
none of this has to be final now because what do we say we're just doing a lot of the initial base coats here none of this is final let's go back to let's try a little purple here once again it's always trying to find some new and different colors to get in here so we're just softening that down I'm even gonna get some purple in here over the eyes because I don't want it to just be straight up green there because that'll just get kind of boring so now the eyes start to look almost a little bit more glowing there. Now let's get something lighter here. And it's okay. Well, I don't want to go all the way to my bridal highlights but to have brighter colors on the face or lighter highlights on the face well again it's the that's where you want the center of attention to be so several types of contrast the obvious one is light versus dark here let's go back to a little bit of the, the umber type color here That was just getting to be too dark. See what I can do here is thin this down. Can knock down some of the spots a little bit here. Don't want to wipe them out. See, just knock them down. Maybe there's just not enough orange on the face, so we'll throw some orange back out here. Mm, I'm gonna try some up here. Ah, that's that's the ticket. See, that's what I'm looking for. What was I thinking? I'm thinking this. So we're trying to bring that in line that's why I tried to do a little bit of an outline around the eyes because it was in effect there's an outline around one of the eyes already and that's on the wings I want <clears throat> sorry to get some orange out here Good, you can see that. And, yeah, this... So we might do this. In, not everywhere, but in some of these. That's, that's the contrast that I'm looking for. Right there. Versus that. It's just a little... It's getting a little plain. Just and see maybe if it's only just along the edge, let's see what happens if we lighten that up a little bit. So this is again part of that experimentation. Yeah, see it's starting to remind me of what we did on the wings. And that definitely more dramatic than that, which is just dead and and nothing right there we don't want dead and nothing that's no good and see we'll put some striations here on these horns just using what's already there do that here Hopefully all of this 
gives you some things to think about because you don't have to well, you don't have to incorporate any of this in your painting if you don't want to it's, it's your painting you do what you whatever you it works best for you whatever you want what's going to suit your project the best these are more just ideas that's they're not supposed to be any kind of hard and fast rules except where while well, there's a physical thing you know where this kind of transition or this type of contrast or that whole idea of dark you need dark to show light and vice versa and those okay they're so-called rules but I don't want you the last thing I want you to do is to start <laughs> anything that I say limit what you might try or do that's it's the whole opposite purpose of these is to get you to just try and do all kinds of new stuff and just see how far you can take it what you can do with it so there we have yeah we're gonna extend this out here I think I'm going to darken this too. So we're starting to get ourselves more more of a face here. Again, I have to determine do I want this to have sort of the glowing eye effect or some kind of de facto irises in there. And pupils. To be honest, I may not really even know that until that towards the end when I've done everything else. All right, what do we got here? So I'm doing some of the orange here to bring out some of this. And why am I doing that? Remember, we've got this greenish collar here. So that's another kind of form of fiery contrast against all of that teal. And so I'm going to turn down the brightness a touch I also have the color intensity and believe it or not turned down a little bit because well, one of the last last few videos have had fluorescent paints in them between the army painter thing the dark sword thing so yeah I had to needed to tone it down a bit because those really, really, really show up on camera and, and make, the, make the camera just kind of go a little crazy. So we're going to take some of that orange here. And again, it's about some a little bit of gentle contrast there. I'll carry some of that through sort of like what we did on the wings a little more here still got my off-white let's get some Again, some brighter tones here on the face. Also, some harder edges. So you notice there's sort of this line of harder edges that goes down here. That's all kind of essential. It's another one of those forms of contrast. There's light versus dark, opposite colors, saturated versus unsaturated, but there's also just hard lines. I think most folks associate those with say not metallic metals 
not just highlights but also stark transitions and lines from one thing to the next but and that can be true for painting the leaves on a tree or whatever so do I have some, I still have some of my jade left and I want to see what potentially some dots look like there. I'm going to grab some of the purple again. Once again, lighten this up. So that's not all just turquoise here. Trying to get a little transition into some purple there. Some more over here. Because even on, say, human skin, well, there's greens, purples, there's all kinds of colors just on our skin. So something like this, you should really at least try to be kind of somewhat adventurous on your skin colors. I'm going to try and see if I can't get a little pink here. Same thing down here. And now, while we've got the last of it here, let's go with some lighter teal on the face. Solidify the lips and some of the underside of this. Make that a little bit lighter. And I know this, it all seems very quick and very rough. Well, it should because technically it's all still the starting point. We have so much more that we can do with this. The idea is for some of you, maybe this is as far as you want to go. And it's because you need it for, for gaming or whatever. And you just say, okay, that's that's done enough. For others, you're going to want to do more, maybe a lot more. And there's nothing that says, well, okay, maybe you do go ahead and use it in a game or whatever. And then you come back to it and you add some more maybe you get a different idea you now you you get some time away from it you see some things you say oh you know I should I should really try doing this so again I wanted to thank everybody for watching this and you know, if you liked it, you can click the little like button there. You can do the share thing if you want. That's That always is really helpful. I appreciate that a lot. And as I mentioned before, there's going to be more episodes of this as we work our way through all the different aspects of this. And those will, be, those will go up on the Patreon page. That's kind of a little exclusive thing for them since they really help keep all this stuff going. They, there's no way I, I would have just stopped doing the videos a long time ago if it wasn't for the patrons, so they are much appreciated. And hopefully 
We get some more folks to join in. And it expands what kind of stuff that I can do for you. So again, this is where we started with our wing here. And now we've now we've worked some of those same colors into the face, some of the same patterns. So thanks again for watching. And I will catch you on the next one as we continue with our Lady of Anguish.